Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to reload 300 AAC Blackout. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Let's get to it. So the first thing I like doing is tumbling my brass. I like to knock off any particulate that might be on the case, uh, so I'm not running dirty cases through my die set. Um, I use the Lyman Turbo Media. It's treated. You don't necessarily need to use a treated kind. The turbo tumbler, a five gallon pail, and a sifter. For this project, we're going to use the RCBS 300 AAC Blackout small base set. It's suggesting to use a RCBS number 10 shell holder. In this kit, you'll have two different dies. You'll have your depriming, resizing die, and your bullet cedar and crimp die so the first thing you'll want to do with your uh, depriming die is make sure that the depriming pin sticks out about three sixteenths of an inch below the bottom of the die once you have that set then we can go ahead and place this into the press now these are steel dies they're my, not carbide dies i have my shell holder already in place I'm going to run the ram all the way up to the top. I'm going to run the die down until I feel it meet resistance. Once I'm there, I'm going to lower the press just a little bit, turn this down because we want what's called a cam over. So you should feel and hear the cam over. Set your locking ring. Now, I've already lubed my shells. They're off to the side here. Uh, now that they're lubed, I'm going to place them into the shell holder. I'm going to run it up to the top of the stroke. I'm going to feel the cam over. I'm going to do a few here. we have a fully deprimed resized shell. I use a six step process when working the brass. Uh, for the lower portion, I have my RCBS workstation already set up. I have the crimp remover uh, for the brass that I've converted from 223556 into 300 blackout. I also have the primer pocket uniformer and the flash hole deburr. So I'll go ahead and work the lower portion of my brass first. Now you can see that I've opened up the flash hole, I've taken out any crimp that's there, and I've also uniformed the primer pocket. So the case trim length should be 1.358 inches. Now I already have my Lyman Case Trim Express set up to trim to that length, so we're ready to go. All I need to do is turn this on, place the case in the case mount holder, trim it. And we're right at 1.358 inches. Now that I have the case trim length, to where I want it. The only other thing I like to do is chamfer and deburr. And because I do, again, volumes of the 300 blackout at one time, I like to use an automated system. So here's the Frankfurt Arsenal workstation. So I chamfer, deburr. Now you're ready to reload your 300 blackout. Now it's time to prime your brass. I already have the shell holder in place. I'm using the RCBS hand primer. You can't see it. I already have the primers in the primer holder. Um, and I like to just make sure that I can see the primer so it's not flipped upside down when I do this. Insert the shell into the shell holder. Make sure you're not covering the mouth of the case with your hand in case you have detonation. Go ahead and give it a squeeze. 
now you have your shell fully primed. All right, so I'm using the Hornady 10th edition Handbook of Cartridge Reloading, page 438. I'm using 168 grain hollow point. The cartridge overall length is 2.215 inches. I like Little Gun. This seems to work well in the 300 blackout. Now, when you're when you're working your loads up, you want to make sure that you're starting off at the lowest and moving to the highest. Somewhere in the middle, you'll find that sweet spot that you like it, what works well for you. For this, this is just an illustration purpose. So I'm going to choose, I'm just going to go 12.1. That's a safe range. That's not even midway. Um, so we'll use 12.1 grains of Little Gun. So I have my scale set. It's already zeroed out. I have this dialed in already. I have my Little Gun into the powder thrower. I just want to make sure that we're close to that 12.1 grains. So we're at 12.2 grains. So perfectly within normal limits. Then we'll go ahead and charge our cases. And I always like to make sure, double check, that you have a powder charge in the cases so you don't get a squib load. So for your bullet seating and crimping die, um, one thing to note is that the die itself, the only purpose it really has is for the crimp. The bullet seater plug, that pushes the bullet into the case. So in order to set this, you have your shell holder in your RAM. You have a primed and charged shell You'll place it into the shell holder. You'll run this all the way up to the top of the stroke. You're going to turn your die down until you feel it touch the case mouth. Once you feel it touch the case mouth, you're just going to turn it back just a little bit and set your locking ring. Because right now we don't want to apply any crimp we're just all we're doing right now is setting the depth of the bullet. I have the bullet seater plug dialed all the way up so it's not going to push that bullet into the case that far. We're going to make micro adjustments in setting that. So I'm placing the bullet into the case mouth. I'm going to run it up to the top of the stroke and I'm going to dial the bullet seater plug down until I meet resistance. Now if you remember correctly, the length should be 2.215 inches. So I'm feeling resistance. I'm going to dial this down just a bit. I got a ways to go here, so I'm going to continue to dial the bullet seater plug down. Still got more distance there. I'll continue to do this back and forth until I hit 2.215 inches. Now I know that the cartridge overall length is set. Now that we have the cartridge overall length where we want it, now we're going to apply just a small amount of crimp. I know it doesn't have a can lure, uh, but for ramp feed issues that I've encountered, I always like to apply a small amount of crimp. So, how do we achieve that? We unlock the locking ring. We turn the bullet seater plug up a few turns. Loosen the locking ring. We put in the cartridge back into the shell holder and we run it up to the top of the stroke. And we're gonna dial the die down just a little bit to apply just a small amount of crimp. Not too much, you don't wanna over crimp because you'll have pressure issues. Now, I can tell that I'm not gonna have ramp feed issues because I don't have a lip hanging up here. So, we're good to go there. 
we set the locking ring again. We put the cartridge back into the shell holder. We run it up to the top of the stroke and we dial down the bullet cedar plug until it touches the top of the bullet. And then we lock it down. Now, if I've done this correctly, I should be able to put in my next case with the bullet, run it up to the top of the stroke. So now we should have a cartridge overall length of 2.215 inches with a perfect crimp. And that's how you reload 300 AAC blackout. Hey guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Rumble at K2Defense. See you next time.